in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. What can you do, Jesus? Let's go! Thank you. 
hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him glory, give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our God is worthy. There is nothing he cannot do. There is nothing he cannot change. There is no situation or circumstance that our God cannot turn around. My prayer is that you can hear me clearly. I'm using gadgets that I've not, I don't really use. And just pray with me on the issue of the sound. I do need to preach and the attacks are just crazy on the sound. May the Lord indeed align the atmosphere. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We proclaim that there is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot change. And there is nothing you cannot turn around. Father, there's a lot of weeping on the land. Indeed, just um, on uh, Friday, I was saying to you that I'm experiencing morning fatigue. Because at that time on Friday, as I fell on my knees before you, I had lost 13 people in just 10, 7 to 10 days. And my heart had wept until it was just exhausted. Father, we want to say, like Job said, that even if you slay me, yet will I still hope in you. We want to say, like Peter said, when you asked Peter in John 6, you asked him, are you also going to leave me? Peter answered with the most, one of the deepest words in scripture. Where can we go? Master, for me, it's been 30 years. Where can I go? There is no past. There is no world. There is no former friends. There is no former life. I cannot even remember what that was. So we hold on to your nail-pierced feet. And he say, where can we go? When you're the carrier of the words of eternal life. Like Job, oh God, we cry and we say, even though you slay us, yet we will still hope in you. Another version says, yet we will still follow. God, we're not going to just follow. Sometimes, you know, we can just follow, but God, we will hope in you. Hope will not be put out. And God, we know that even though it feels like the sun has been snuffed out, it's just us feeling because God, you're still on the throne. When the foundations are shaken, what will the righteous do? Father, scriptures that we have read over many years that we never understood, now we see. Brethren, if the foundations are shaken, what will the righteous do? My God, there is a shaking. We shudder when we remember God. I'm reminded of Mount Olive Prayer Center. I think it was in 2013 or 2014, but no later than that. Seven or eight years ago. And we were crying out in the cold in Tigoni. And we had made a circle as women and were so hungry for it. It was 2012. And we were crying in your presence. I remember looking at the time and it was just about... 1 a.m. and it was so cold our fingers were going numb but on that grass outside we were weeping and saying shake the nations and God as I look back I shudder because we didn't even know what we are saying so as you shake the nations father let us oh God be planted on the solid rock that cannot be shaken master as you shake the foundations as you shake the nations Jehovah God do not allow us Mungu Baba to see Zame oh my God let us not drown oh my god let us oh god not lose our hope in you my god let us master not lose our faith oh god father the pain is real 
<laughs> the pain of loss is real and I weep with those who've lost family members because even though I haven't lost a family member, Master, in losing friends and colleagues, Jehovah, it has hurt more than I thought I'm capable of hurting. Yet God, those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, I always thought that those words referred to those who want to get born again. But how wrong I was. How I have come to learn that you literally just mean those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You will come and save. You are the carrier of healing. Like your word says in Malachi, that they that fear the Lord, the son of righteousness will rise up with healing in his wings. My God, arise with healing in your wings. God, I mourn with those who are mourning. So many young widows, so many young widowers. That Father, no words, no words, no words can comfort them. Everything we've ever known about comfort is so useless in the season, Jehovah. Teach us how to respond as only you can, Master. I speak shalom to your heart, dear one. Have you lost a loved one? Do you have somebody sick in hospital? I speak shalom, a peace that surpasses all understanding, because indeed, unless the Lord comes and ministers with shalom, in this season you can lose your faith. You can lose your faith. And yet, really, if we lose our faith because of what we experience, was our faith in the things of this world? Where was our treasure? Was it not on this world where earth and moss can destroy? Our faith must be in God. Our treasure must be in heaven. Indeed, we must remember we enter this world alone and we will live alone. We must lose all attachment to human human beings and to the things of this world and indeed while still loving as Jesus loved for if we lack love then we are nothing the bible says that if we 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 we, we prophesy and if we speak with the tongues of angels you know if all those things happen yet we lack love if we give uh, you know even our own lives and yet we lack love then we are just as clumsy Gunging gongs. It's like we're just gong, 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 gong. We are nothing without love. So indeed we must love. We must love. The temptation right now is not to get close to anybody because, you know, if you hear someone is sick to begin to disconnect yourself so that you don't get hurt, the Lord will not have us do that. We must love people into the kingdom of heaven. The last sound they must hear from this earth as they transition must be the sound of love. And we will love by giving to those hospital bills and out giving ourselves. We will love by standing with those who are unwell. We will love by ministering to people and not holding back, letting them know that we love them. As I was hiking on the mountain, uh, I did uh, Old Onyo Satima, also called Dragon's Teeth, and I bless God, I was able to rise to the peak, which stands at 4,001 meters. By the way, I've been doing a lot of hiking. I love hiking, but I've been doing more hiking this year, and I believe it is actually spiritual, and it's just the Lord just reflecting the things of the world, and hiking just has a way of building your endurance and exercise too, but I am getting to a point. I rounded a bend and just were just beginning to get to the peak and for those of you that know how um you know hikes go at the peak the mountain just seems like it has risen and it's refusing you to peak and it's very very difficult so at the place where i was just oh oh so tired panting saying oh jesus oh oy, mommy you know and you're calling you know names and just crying to god for help and strength i looked up so tired 
and I spotted this guy who we used to work with um, that I really, really liked when we worked together, just a really wonderful man. And I have not seen him since 2010. And all of a sudden, 11 years later, we are rounding a bend and I see him and he sees me and he's coming down and I'm going up and he looks and says, Apostle Kathy. And I look up and I say, Steve. And I got so excited. I told him, COVID protocols ish. I just hugged him. And, you know, of course, he looked very uh, weird and out because I uh, mean, obviously, I'd never hugged him in the workplace. But I just took time to let him know that I love him. And I met his son. And I just took time to tell him what an amazing person his dad was. And he was looking pretty spooked out. <laughs> but I said, I'm just going to, you know, and that's one of the things the Lord is teaching me to do. If I treasure you. I am going to tell you that I treasure you. Of course, with the opposite gender, we do have to be careful for somebody not to think that it is sexual and just love them with the love of the Lord. But do not withhold your love. Do not withhold your love in terms of just letting somebody know you admire them in terms of who they are and what they have meant into your life. It's not a time to withhold because one minute we were withholding and the next minute we are realizing that the last time we met somebody was actually a goodbye. Don't let anybody die and you're left regretting. And of course, sharing the love of Jesus Christ. And he's my friend on Facebook, so at least I knew he was hiking. And at some point I was telling the Lord, Father, I would really love to hike with this gentleman just to catch up. And also I love his resilience, you know. And, uh, you know, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, I just thought about that. And I'm just saying, guys, we're in that season. Tell your parents that you love them, even though in your family people don't say, I love you. Just say it. Tell them you love them. Send them some money and tell them today, mom, just get some liver today and fry it on me. Get some food put together for your parents and send a rider in or send a cab in or whatever it is and let it be their favorite thing and just write a little note and say, as you eat this, Ben a song, as you eat this, let the, just be saying, let the Lord be praised because you're eating this because of my child. In our nanny school, I want to share as well in our nanny school, before I get to the point of what the Lord told me to get online and really say, you know, I run a nanny school and it's been hard. It's not been easy, obviously, all through the years, of course, um, because just um, rehabilitating people who've been hurt deeply and, and uh, have grown up in extreme poverty and have suffered a lot is not easy. There's a lot of lack of trust and a lot of rumors and all that. But in the COVID time, it's been even harder. So we lost one of our girls to COVID and um, God has been really good to us. Um, but we lost one of our girls to COVID. She had left the home by the time she contracted COVID. And um, I spoke to her on the 9th of July, and she was just telling me, Pastor Nayenda, Pastor Nayenda, which means, Pastor, I'm going, Pastor, I'm going. And we agreed she was going to go for a COVID test because what she was saying did not sound to me like pneumonia. Unfortunately, just about six days later, I received the sad news that she had rested. Now, this girl was one of the trusting girls, and she had saved some money in the circle. And we waited and nobody was contacting us or calling us from the family. And um, uh, one of the things I realized, of course, there was also a bit of money that was left from the last salary. We had had some trouble collecting it from the employer. And when she passed, I called the employer and I said, this girl has died with you holding her money. And of course, I was pretty disappointed when the person said, well, you know, we are church elders and we cannot refuse with her money. And I said, but why would you hold on to it? Why would you hold on to it for almost two months, you know? I'm not giving any names, so nobody can point to anybody. But immediately the next day, the lady did pay. Uh, it wasn't really much, but uh, she did pay. And she did ask how she can stand with the family, and we did offer how she can do it. Um, and it's a journey. It's a journey. We all make mistakes. And I guess, you know, when your worker leaves suddenly and says they're sick and you're not seeing them sick, I guess, sometimes it can be a challenge. But anyway, she did sort it out. So um, I called the brother and said, hey, my name is so-and-so. And I just wanted you to know that your sister did leave some money. And uh, I'm not going to send it to you right now because you'll use it on the burial. And I want it to be used on any surviving parent. And he confirmed that the mother is alive. And I said, well, save my number. When you have finished burying her, please contact me. And today I was so excited speaking to her mother. And she didn't even know that there was any money left behind. And I said to her, Mama, you know we are Christians. That's why I've called you. Otherwise, we can easily keep quiet and hold on to the money. And I thank God that this lady believed that we are Christians. 
And so she didn't even brief her family or tell them anything and they had nothing to expect. Can you imagine the joy of calling somebody to let them know? To let them know that Jesus loves you and we have money from your daughter. And we are Christians and that's why we are communicating with you that she was a saver. She had been saving and this is the name she wrote of the person to be contacted in case she's not around or in case of an emergency. And I asked mama, mama, are you okay with me sending it to the person who was written? And she said, yes, this is a person who does take care of me, my children. And yes, and she was so comforted by knowing that at least we are sending in some money. Why am I saying this, brethren? I'm saying this because we're in a season when we must look out for how we can encourage those who are grieving and those who are hurting and those who are lost. But anyway, just coming back to being in the nanny school, I don't even know why I was saying this, brethren. I, I think I was just saying um, the need for honesty and the need to do what is right, even when people around you don't even trust you and, and you know, say all manner of things. And I bless the Lord for that ability today to call somebody whose family member is not present and be able to say to them, hey, we have something. One person is saying, I have lost you, Apostle. I don't know if you guys have lost me. I, I don't think the rest of you have lost me. <laughs> okay, somebody's clicking like. Well, somebody's commenting. Hallelujah. Am I still live? Shake Rebo Sandarabazaya. Worth is the Lamb of God. I'm just waiting for confirmation that we are live. Ray Kandi Ribasaya, somebody has responded with a love, which confirms to me that we are live. Instead of waiting to type, you can just uh, like or love, then it always responds and lets us know, or a thumbs up, just saying we are still live. Amen. God bless you. Now, I want to tell you why I got live today. Yesterday morning, the Lord um, just uh, began to speak to my heart. And uh, in 2012, the Lord told me, I want you to birth revival. And uh, that was in March of 2012. I had no idea what revival was. I began to read up on it, go to Keswick and just really harass the bookkeepers there saying, I need to read something. I'm looking for something, but I don't know what it is. The Lord has just called me and there's a fire burning in me and I don't know what it is. And that's when one of them said, I think it's revival. Because I wasn't really sleeping. I wasn't really sleeping. And I said, there's something going on. I, I don't know what it is. And they said, sounds to me like revival. And I tried to find Wagarewa Banana to go and ask, is this what revival is and all that? And of course, nine years ago, I thought revival was coming then. And the Lord had gotten me to gather together women and would pray together and saints of God, the Lord moved. The last time I saw the Lord move like that was in 1997 when I was in campus. The Lord moved. It had been 15 years and suddenly the Lord was beginning to move in mighty ways and that culminated in us starting Sozo Church of God in 2013. Um, of course, I expected the women who are in Daughters of Elohim to come. I was saying, hey, we have a movement of 30 women and they are coming together with their children and their husbands. I said, ah, easy, we have a church of 50 and that's a big church, hallelujah. And when we started, none of them showed up. Wapendwa! <laughs> I tell you, the journey of birthing revival is unlike anything you'll ever go through. And that's why revival can take hundreds of years to come again. It takes a changing in character. You will lose everything in the process, in the journey. Your name will be tarnished. Satan will malign you because he did the very same thing to our Lord Jesus Christ. And I do need the grace to write the book of the journey to revival. We have passed through things. When you think through, through many dangers, toils, and snares. <laughs> I have already come, brethren. Oh, until you will quit. Many are those who quit along the way. And I must say so many times I have fainted. Forgive me, Father. 
Oh, I have lost weight until I've gotten all the way to 48 kilos, 47 kilos. My blood pressure has dropped to even a pressure of 46, 45 levels. And doctors checking me and trying to check what's wrong with my heart. Revival bathing, saints of God. And yesterday morning, I woke up and the Lord has been speaking to my heart and saying, I am doing a new thing. I've been in the midst of a heavy storm. And this time I said, Father, in spite of the storm, I am not relenting. I will fix my eyes on you. And the Lord began to ask me about a week ago, Catherine, are you ready to lose everything? And I said, you know, I counted the cost and I said, Father, I am not turning back in 1997 i turned back i fainted i was too afraid i got caught up i didn't really know much i was too young but this time father i am not turning back and the Lord began to say, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And then yesterday he said, stand at my altar and begin to pro make proclamations. So at nine o'clock, I stood at the altar and just began to pray. And the altar felt so dry. And I was wondering, have we not been praying? And the Lord said, you have in many ways given up. You have in many ways been satisfied by the view of how far you have gotten and where you are at. After all, your church is not as dead and as many other churches. Although before me, dead is dead. It doesn't matter. And I wept before the Lord. And I began to say, today's got to be a turnaround. Today's got to be something. And I was just repenting in the presence of the Lord. And I thank God for Pastor Marie, who had been earlier on interceding and just pressing in. And she just never gives up. And I just thank God for this young little girl. And then Pastor Chris got on and began to just speak the things the Lord has been saying. And earlier on, the Lord had told me when the work increases a lot, normally it's good to send for somebody who will help you. And Pastor Chris was coming in answer to that call. And if you have not listened to the message yesterday, <laughs> you need to listen to the preaching yesterday and the series we have been on. In the, later in the afternoon, I was just praying with my sister, Pastor Betty from Ethiopia, and I just felt the need to pray. She was supposed to leave at 6 p.m. We'd spend the afternoon together. I was exhausted. I need to read for some exams that are coming up. I'm climbing Mount Kenya from Thursday, and my life is just, oh. <laughs> then at 6 o'clock is approaching, the Spirit of God says, enter my presence. So I say, Pastor Betty, let's pray. And let me tell you, the glory of God just came down. And the Lord reminded me that when broken women begin to pray, when broken women begin to agree, and all they want is Jesus, when they have set aside their flesh and everything, and it includes men too, but when you are tired and all you want is Jesus, then Jesus comes. We will seek him and find him when we seek him with all of our hearts. And as we began to press in with Pastor Betty, I was just reminded of the taste of revival again. And our hunger was ignited yet again in my spirit and a longing, the kind you do not sleep. And let me tell you, I slept at 5 a.m. <laughs> And I was reminded of part of the reason why I pull back sometimes from revival because of the exhaustion. Because when the Spirit of God is bubbling, even sleep is just becomes a thing that you wonder. And that's part of why revivalists die very quickly. Because their spirit man connects with the Spirit of the living God. And the atmosphere becomes the atmosphere of heaven. And you don't want to live in the atmosphere of earth. And yet we are still in this clay. And this clay does need to rest, does need to eat. Saints of God, I have not eaten. Other than lunch yesterday, I have not eaten. My body, my spirit man does not want me to eat. Remember, I did a really long hike on Saturday. So normally you'd have hunger pangs and all that. But part of what happens is that you just enter into a fasted state. And indeed, today is a day of prayer and fasting. But I was going to have something because I have not really had anything since yesterday. And I need to replenish. And of course, I'm preparing for Mount Kenya, which is quite a climb. 
Yesterday, again, the Lord reminded me of something, saints of God, that I want to share with you yet again. But it was such a freshness, I'm saying again, because I've shared. And this is about Galatians 5. The, the physical, the, 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 the flesh wrestles against the spirit, and the spirit wrestles against the flesh. Whenever you're having fleshly issues, you can struggle dealing with your flesh, which will frustrate you, exhaust you, you know, cause you to get discouraged, cause you to feel condemned because you're attacking the flesh. The flesh is violent when you try to attack it. Or you can follow the easier way where you follow the spirit. And as you follow the spirit of the living God and just focus on the spirit, even as you repent and just let God deal with your flesh, then there is a switch, a turning. Just look at my fingers as I turn them. There is just a switch in the atmosphere. Something just flips. Poop. And all of a sudden, last night, you know, because for me, it's just been an exhaustion and even prayer has just been a chore. And when I talk about prayer, it's a laboring kind of prayer, not just the Kaweda prayer for being sustained. But, you know, and all of a sudden it became so easy. And again, I was reminded that when the spirit man is awakened, then the flesh just goes to bed and basically dies. And I want to speak this to somebody. You're struggling with your flesh. Just focus on the spirit. Fast and pray. Connect with somebody who loves Jesus deeply and is going to pray with you. And that was the igniting that happened yesterday. And all the way to 5 a.m., my spirit man was just saying, even so come, even so come. Lord Jesus, come. We cry for you. We hunger for you. We thirst for you. Of course, the flesh is trying to say, I've seen you here many times. I'm still waiting for you. You will give up soon. And I was just saying, God, I don't know how long this will last because only the spirit of God can sustain us. But for this season, for this time, for this moment, I will live in crying, God, Lord Jesus, come. At midnight, the Lord was just uh, convicting my spirit. He was reminding me of the fleshly thing that we do. That when we hear somebody has died, then we do fundraisers very quickly and we give. But if somebody is in hospital and there's a bill, we do, do not really give and we give reluctantly. And you know the thing with COVID is that the uniqueness of COVID is that you can't say, how come they don't have insurance? How come they don't have NHIF? Nothing is covering it. And so we have to stand together and use the power of masses where even if one person gives a thousand shillings, once a hundred people have given, you have a hundred thousand shillings. Once a thousand people have given, you have, yes, you know the figure, I cannot even count it. It's a season we have to give and out give ourselves, saints of God. And indeed, the Lord will always give back to us a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We lack because we don't give generously. We lack because we are looking at what we have, and we are thinking, if I give, I will not have. The Lord will provide all your needs according to his riches in glory. You can never give out of your heart and, you know, what you have felt in your heart to give and lack. It is just not the tenets of God. So the next message the Lord was giving me after that, I sent this to a pastoral group. And, you know, part of what I was feeling as I was sharing these messages is, God, I don't want to offend. I don't want to offend. I've never had qualms with offending. But somehow as I've been birthing revival and the Lord has been working on me, I don't want to offend people. And so I sent to this pastoral forum and um, I was just, let me tell you now, this is the heart of today's message. If you miss not everything else, just remember this. For a few weeks, the Lord has been asking me a question. The Netherlands, where I have been, a nation that is mostly godless, as in they, they are atheist in many ways, and those who are born again, no, those who are, uh, are, are religious, excuse me, are more of religious. The churches are empty. But the Netherlands are shutting down their prisons because there are no prisoners. I looked at that um, message, I think it was about three or four months ago. It was a news item and I cried. I was just staring at it and I cried. 
when I went to the Netherlands, I was in a hotel room and bless God for the saints of God in the Netherlands. Hey, I was treated so beautifully. They were so kind. And um, they, they just were, 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 were um, you know, they just made sure that I was very, very comfortable. But one of the things that happened when I was in a hotel room, very nice hotel, you know, and by the way, comfort for a servant of God when you go to pray is, and to minister is so important. We might not tell you, but it's very, very important just to help us to be able to birth what God um, wants to do or has to do. And uh, so I was in this hotel room and um, I made a call and I said, hey, could you guys get me an adapter that, um, you know, fits your country and the socket place where you put it in? Uh, for those who haven't had the opportunity to travel, different countries have different shapes of the socket part. And how you put it in in South Africa, it's a round, big thing. You know, the place that has three plugs is normally round and big. And so it cannot fit into Kenya and, and, and our Kenyan ones cannot fit there. So I can't even remember what the Netherlands was like, but I didn't have any of those. And so I called and said, could I have one? Um, because I've come to learn that the hotels normally provide those as part of just one of the perks um, and benefits for um, their people. So they said, sure, right away, ma'am. And I waited and 30 minutes later, nothing had come. An hour later, nothing had come and I needed to charge my gadgets. And so um, I, I went downstairs and um, I was quite upset, but, you know, not shouting or anything. Um, but I, I went downstairs and I said, hey, I asked um, for this socket thing um, an hour ago and I haven't received it yet. And the lady said, oh, ma'am, I'm really sorry. I actually forgot. And I looked at her my jaw literally dropped <laughs> as in i was well this is new she told the truth she forgot and i wondered whether i've ever heard anybody in a hotel tell the truth until i got to the netherlands she could have come up with an excuse and later on, when I was talking to um, 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 the, the brethren there, I said, hey, you guys, this is what I experienced. And she said, by the way, these guys are very honest. They are very honest. As in, they are very honest. And I'm like, but I don't get it. There is no godliness in this country, but they are honest? That makes no sense. And so it began to bother me then, but it bothered me all the more when I saw that, you know, um, news item saying that the prisons in Netherlands are being closed because there are no prisoners. The prisoners have reformed and people are not committing crime. And as a third year law student, one of the things that I got to thinking because I've done criminology and penology, we have a big problem since of God. The prisons in Kenya, I actually ended up being assigned this, this thing. By the way, God is very interesting because what I was to do, um, the, the, the project I was to do, somehow I ended up not being available to, to present it that day. And this wonderful lecturer gave me a second opportunity and she said, hey, look at uh, prisons and congestions in prisons. And I thought, yeah, really? And then I went to study and I looked at the statistics and I'm like, what? And then I called um, a few um, lady justices who told me, yeah, you know, the prisons are so full right now. And they don't know what to do. And part of what Kenya is responding by doing is giving what they call non-custodial sentences. Custodial is being in custody of state, you know, a guest of the state going to prison. So they are trying to think of things like fines and other ways of making sure that not everybody is being sent to prison. Eh? And saints of God, we say that we are a country of more than 85% Christian. How? How? And one of the reasons for me, I held back a bit from um, the pressing in for revival and even pressing in terms of praying for Kenya as much as we were doing was just a sense of loss. Just saying, I've been praying for Kenya since 2012. That's when I, I got a real burden to pray for Kenya. You know, during elections, I've prayed for Kenya since 1997, but only during elections. And then the others are just random prayers. But consistently praying for Kenya, grieving for Kenya, fasting for Kenya. You know, I mean, we have done since 2012, nine years. And as some of you listen to me, especially the older people, I know there are many of you who have been praying since even the 70s and the 60s and the 50s. God bless you. 
And so for me, part of what I've looked at is, Kwani, what's wrong with our prayers? The Bible is clear that the fervent, effective prayer of a righteous person avails much. So why isn't our country changing? Why are things even getting worse? Now, last week, as I was doing my run, one of the things the Lord began to speak to my heart is just teach me something. That if one of the promises that God makes to us is that if we ask for, if for anything, you know, if, if we are obedient to God and we honor him, and indeed that we abide in his, his words and his words abide in us, then if we ask for anything in the name of Jesus, according to the will of God, we will receive it. Is it not the will of God for a nation to turn to God? Of course it's the will of God for a nation to turn to God. Of course, it's the will of God for the peoples in the nation to have the fear of God. So I, I was just speaking to the Lord and I was saying, this is obviously in line with scripture. Ask of me and I will give the nations as an inheritance. Ask of me. I will give you the nations. And here I am. Send me to the nations. I, I looked for a man that would stand in the gap for, for the land and I found none. Here I am, Father. Here I am, Father. How can it not be the will of God? Even today as we fast and pray for Kenya, I am praying that you, you are indeed fasting, not just escorting, saying, praying, 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 and we are not praying. So I thought it's either one of two things. Number one, either we are not praying. When we are saying we are praying, but we are not praying. Or number two, we are not walking in the will of God such that, you know, you know the way the Bible says, if you regard iniquity in your heart, if you, if you basically allow sin in your heart, God cannot hear you. By then you cannot be walking in deliberate sin and repented, you know, refusing to repent before the presence of God. And then you go to prayer and God hears you. It's contrary to scripture. So it's either that as well. Number one, either we are not praying. Number two, um, you know, we, 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 and we do not, uh, you know, um, uh, offer our prayers and our, our sacrifice of prayer according to the heart of Abel. We are operating as Cain, are we? Number three is that we do not know how to pray. Because the Bible says the effective, fervent prayer. Effective, effective. It has to be effective. And of course, fervency refers to frequency. Going and knocking. Boom, 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 boom. Remember that thing of this guy who did not fear God. But there was this woman who was just knocking on the door. Just saying, please, 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 please. And finally he said, I cannot sleep unless I give this woman what she wants. And God told us, so continue to seek, continue to knock, continue to ask persistence or number four maybe we have not asked the lord and most importantly yes god you have given me this and this translates even to your personal life and your personal situation you've given me this gift you've given me this thing but loving father i come and i kneel before you and i say i give back to you the right to be able to ask for anything through the name of jesus and I say, how can I honor you with this? How would you have me pray? And so last night I sent this message to a pastoral team. And I said, this is it. And when I began to say this to the Lord, it was about, I think, midnight, 1 a.m. that I was saying this to the Lord. The Lord began to say to me, number one, you guys do not know who you are, you know, and that includes me. He was saying, you don't know what you carry. You don't know what you carry. We are soldiers of the cross, fearsome soldiers of the cross, sons of God. The Bible calls us gods. But we walk as flesh and just part of this world. And hence why we are powerless. Number two, the Lord said to me, we're not really hungry. He said, you're satisfied with the things I've blessed you with? You're satisfied with your sweet children and your nice husbands and wives? You're satisfied with your little mediocre jobs? You're satisfied. You've, you, you're sojourners on this world, but you have settled on this world. And, you know, like, in a, um, was it uh, John, John, uh, it was John, John and James. You're busy saying, pardon me if I, I didn't get the, the right names. You're busy saying, eh, 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 tapping God like this. Eh, I can see Moses. I can see Elijah. Can we build for them so that then they can stay here with us? We, 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 we are comfortable. 
This world has become our home. We are really enjoying ourselves. Like frogs that are being cooked. We are like, oh, the water is so warm. The water is so nice. Oh, and then we are being cooked. We are enjoying this earth. We don't even want to leave. When we hear death is on the prowl, we are scared. And it's not really being scared of death. But you don't want to leave. And yet we know that to be absent in the body is to be present with Christ. And I'm not saying we be suicidal. But a Christian can never be afraid to rest in the Lord. And so the Lord said, you're comfortable. You're willing to live a moment, a moment longer with the filth of this world, with the pandemic and sickness and the death. And, and we're even getting, you know, the American thing where we get excited by all this that's going on. You know, a, a, Americans have this sensationalism thing that happens. And so there's that thing of, oh, oh, so online. Oh, did you see the wife? Oh, did you see the children? Oh, so terrible. So horrible. Oh, man. What times? And we are actually beginning to enjoy joy, entertainment of all the drama that this world gives. And we're enjoying the dressing up for funerals and we're enjoying the, 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 the being there for each other and we're enjoying the fact that we've learned how to use technology and we're enjoying, oh, someone is sick and we're pressing it and God is now using us and the person is off oxygen and, oh, God used me. Did you guys see? Did you see the glory? Did you see the goodness of God? Have you seen how anointed? Have you seen how when I pray? The other thing the Lord was saying to me is we become copycats. There are no two identical revivals, brethren. And we have become copycats, myself included, where you go and you read about the Azusa revival and it says it was just a few women who are praying. And so you call a few women and you begin to pray with those few women, hoping to just do exactly what William Seymour did. Laziness really is what it is, isn't it? laziness. The other thing the Lord was saying to me is especially for us as servants of God we have lost intimacy and the, the need to really just be intimate with the Lord. You know, God speaks to his friends. He speaks to his friends. And so you know what we are doing? We are going to each other's platforms and we hear and see and if there's a witness in my spirit instead of even affirming the servant of God I quickly run with what they're saying but we don't have a revelation and of course we are not even affirming the servant of God who said plagiarism is what we would call it if it was to do with writing and true when it comes to the things of God they are open for us all but that's why nothing is happening because as servants of God we, and children of God, we move in very unique ways. Very unique ways. And then, of course, in so many ways, a lot of us as servants of God, we are just really looking to be seen. Let revival fall at Sozo Church of God so that all those who detracted us, all those who said all they said, all those who looked down upon us, all those when I left work and people thought I was mad, let revival fall. So, oh, you know, the press will come. You know, guys will see the glory of God. My intentions are not right. I want to be like Robert Kayanje so that people can talk about me like Robert Kayanje. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And there is so much pride. You know, I remember a story, and I hope I get this right. There was a man of God uh, up the street from uh, another man of God. And then his church was older than the other church. And he had been preaching and he'd been faithful and he was an older man of God. And then he started noticing that the sanctuary was getting emptier and emptier and emptier. When he decided to investigate, he found out that the people who had been in his sanctuary were going down the road to a younger man of God. He decided to go there and see. And when he realized that the glory of God was there, he went and submitted himself to Charles Spurgeon who was the younger man of God. And he said, I am here to serve for I see the anointing of God upon you. Rather than compete, rather than malign each other, rather than try to put another one down hoping that the sheep will not go there. We have to compliment one another. 
We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And by this that they will know that we are Christians by our love. It cannot be a competition. It cannot be about doing one another. And indeed, when you see the anointing of the Lord is upon this vessel that may be way younger than you, you should be able to submit yourself for there is an order in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. Oh, Lama Zikerebo Zandirikai. John the Baptist submitted himself to our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And when they went to him, hoping to tarnish the name of our Lord and to bring a competition between the followers of John the Baptist and the followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, they went and they said, you remember that young man you baptized the other day? He had no following, but now people are going to him and he's now baptizing, which was not even true. But John the Baptist was able to recognize the situation and he said, nobody can go to the Father, unless the Father draws them, hallelujah. It cannot be about competition. It cannot be about coping. It cannot be about filling up sanctuaries. There is a song that is sung, I think, by Bethel or by Maverick City. And they say that, you know, God, I have learned that you're not about filling the sanctuary. You want to fill hearts. God is about filling hearts. Of what use is it when you have a congregation of hundreds of thousands, but they are empty? Come on, somebody. Of what use is it? because the Lord may not even be allowed in that place it just means you're a good motivational speaker it just means you're good probably at human resources it just means you're a good leader but the presence of the Lord is not there but when revival comes you don't even need to go and call anybody the Lord draws men to themselves when the son of God is lifted up he will draw all men unto himself. The mistake we are making as the church today is trying to draw men. That's not our job. It is our work to lift up the Son of God. And it is his work to draw all men. He doesn't say some men. He draws all men unto himself. The other reason revival is tiring is because we are distracted. But we can only be distracted when Jesus is not enough. This morning when I woke up, the Lord said to me, Am I more to you than anything else? Am I more to you than anything else? And I stopped and I contemplated. In the past, I'd quickly say, Yes, Lord. But these days I'm learning to stop. I guess I'm growing older. And I've made so many mistakes and promises and not kept them. And I stopped and I said, for the Lord to ask me this, I cannot be like Peter who said, I can never deny you. I can never deny you. And all the apostles who are disciples and they said, I cannot deny you. I cannot deny you only to deny him. And so I stopped and I said, Lord, you know my heart. Are you more to me, Lord? Are you more to me, Lord? And I said, God, you've given me a comfortable life. You've been so good to me. When I started serving you, I was so afraid because I've seen pastors suffering. And I was so afraid. And I had that conversation with the Lord. But my God, you've been so good to me. You've kept me comfortable. You have been there for me, oh God. You've been good to me, oh God. And I said, God, I think I've gotten comfortable with the things you've given me with the blessings and of course gotten caught up in the distractions here and there and I said Holy Spirit help me help me that God would mean everything to me and birthing revival would mean everything to me because I know I was created you know you have to know your purpose I am a revivalist when God formed me in my mother's womb it was for revival And so this morning was about just going back to my purpose. May he be more than enough. When he's not, then we easily get distracted. 
when something comes and hits you, oh God, I'm so sad. I'm so, oh my, oh God, I'm so angry with you. Why did you let my mother die after the way I've served you, after the way she has served you, after the way God, we have fasted, we've taken care of the whatever. But God, how can the created challenge the creator? How can the creator challenge the creator? When we know God, we know he's incapable of anything except what is good. Finally, I want to close with this. There is a pandemic, friends. There is a pandemic, brethren. People are dying that have no business dying. People are dying that, that, fear, that, that, that do not fear the Lord or know the Lord. But we carry the cure. We carry the cure, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Revival is about releasing Christ in us into the atmosphere. And wherever did Jesus went, he did good, healing all people, hallelujah. All they did was touch him and they were healed. If people can touch Jesus today, we carry him, then they'll be healed. Stop looking to a scientist. We must look to God. The scientists have done what they can. They are still trying and may God help them. But things are really backfiring on them. Let the saints of God begin to groan in the presence of the Lord for the earth. Let her voice be heard in Rama, Rachel weeping for her children, for they are no more. Let's be heard crying, mercy, 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 Lord, mercy, 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 Lord. But when revival falls on a nation, one of the things that disappears is sickness. Because revival is the glory of God. Revival is the glory of God descending. Even the vegetation changes. In revivals, because I've been studying revivals for several years, one of the things you notice, even rivers that have become filthy, do you know rivers and oceans and all that, they choke and die based on the sin on the land or the godliness on the land. As in seriously, when we walk in sin, we actually destroy the land. We destroy the land. And the land is groaning. The land arises and curses us, just like Lot was cursed by the land. And that's what's going on. This earth is responding to our sin. Remember, the earth is alive. In fact, God says it will be judged and it will be destroyed and God will create a new earth. It's alive. It has a soul. It's created. And so when we go contrary to God, remember also the sun. When Jesus died on the cross, what did the sun do? It refused to look. It went out. They bear witness. God says he will judge the sun and the moon. He will judge this earth. So when we sin, the earth arises to fight us. The earth arises to fight us. We used to laugh at China because the Chinese used to walk around with masks. Now who's walking around with a mask? Wickedness. 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 I want to finish with a scripture in the book of James. My prayer as I went live today is that this will not just be a broadcast that will touch your heart and you cry and get all moved and then after that forget about it. I pray that the Lord would find fertile hearts. Give me a second to find it. Uh. Oh, Jesus. 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 James chapter 1, verse 15. Let's begin from verse 14. But each person is tempted 
when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and they are enticed. Notice the steps. We are tempted when we are, we are dragged away by our own evil desires and then we are enticed. And then after desire has conceived, it then gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, it gives birth to death. This is what's going on with the world. James chapter 1 verse 15. Guys, have you noticed how alcohol is being exalted on the earth today? Have you noticed how people assume we drink? I don't know if it's happened to you, but just an assumption that you drink and when you meet somebody, they even know you're a pastor and they say, ah, yeah, 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 come, I buy you one. Come, I buy you one. And you have to ask God for the wisdom on how to respond. Why? Because even people in the church are drinking themselves to a stupor. We've decided that we are using the scripture that says that a little wine is good for your stomach. Since when? The Holy Ghost is now here. The blood of Jesus Christ, the new wine he is. We do not need wine. For who? For who? Sexual sin. As a pastor, I have people reaching out to me with sexual offers. And they're writing, apostle. Then going ahead to tell you how hot you are and how desirous you are and how you're amazing. The earth, the earth, the earth, the earth. Oh, Marikaya, Razente, Rebo, Yarakaya. There's no fear of God. Even those who are on their deathbeds are toasting each other. And at the memorial, they are talking about how they toasted one another at that deathbed. And the worldly things they said to one another. Even when we are transitioning, we've been taught in the new age about what it means to die. There is no fear and preparation to go to heaven. Someone on the deathbed just tells you outrightly that they are not ready to get saved. When are you going to be ready to get saved and yet you're dying? I don't know if you've noticed that people are refusing to get saved. There is a fallenness on the earth that only revival can mend. There is a fallenness on the earth that only a revival can mend. We need to stop talking and start praying. We need to ask God to help us get to the place where we cannot bear it anymore till the glory of God falls. Lord, have mercy on us. Spirit of the living God, won't you come and help us? Give us a hunger. There's a song that says, there is a longing only you can feel. A raging tempest, I think those are the words. Father, give us a longing that only you can feel. Give us a longing that only you can feel. Put in us a raging tempest that only you can silence and satisfy. At Sozo Church of God, if we were to have all the people who have been there over seasons to birth revival, if we were to have them put in a room, they would fill a stadium. It can no longer be about excitement. You know, when you go to a sanctuary and just get excited because of how they are praying or because you felt a slight glory of God. And for us as leaders, when we get excited simply because of that, we can get caught up. The deception of the house filling up can become a satisfaction and a false affirmation with people coming that God did not send and that are there just for the bread and for the fish that are, for the, are there for the next hot thing and cool thing just to be able to say, yeah, do you know that woman of God? Yeah, 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 celebrity. We're not celebrities. May the Lord gather together those he has prepared for end time revival. I'm amazed that since 2012 up to now, God has not passed us over. Do you know when revival does not find a land to settle in, it moves to the next place? That tells you that indeed there are people who've been crying to the Lord. May we not be passed over. 
may we not be passed over because also when you're passed over, when revival was to come to your nation, then chaos falls. Revival is mercy. But when you reject the Son of God and then he moves to another land, then judgment comes upon that nation. Are you tired? Elections are coming next year and I just feel tired already. Are you tired of the hope, excitement, trusting, and then a leader comes in and just turns to be the most wicked person, more wicked than the last one, and you cannot believe that this person can be like this, and they're giving you the eyes of, I am the it. What are you going to do? I am so tired. I'm so tired of hoping that the next elections is our breakthrough. And I've truly come to learn that no politician is going to offer us reprieve. I'm reminded of, uh, I think it was in, in, in the UK somewhere, I think the Wales, where they had, are you leaving now? Sorry, I'm saying bye to my son. Love you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. All right. Wednesday. We'll talk. You come Wednesday evening? Okay, love you. Sorry, I was just saying bye to my son. He's going back to school. Oh, Jesus. So it was in the Wales, as I was saying. There were elections that were going on and campaigns and all those things. And the politicians had no masses. And they wondered every time they called for a rally, there were no people. So they started investigating to find out where the people, do you know the people had decided they wanted nothing to do with politicians and they'd gone to church? Kenya, it's time for us to snub all these politicians. Let's go to the house of God, where help may be found. So the politicians came to church, God saved, and then the Lord appointed them himself, and that's how that nation changed, and that's how change came. For as long as our rallies, political rallies, are fuller than our places of prayer and worship, even the pandemic will continue to ravage us. For as long as our eyes are saying so and so Tosha, and so and so is great, and so and so this, and so and so that, but I was going to run for a position, but I just told the Lord, Lord, just allow me to birth revival. Allow me to birth revival. Where is our hope? Where is our hope? Cast is he who trusts in man. Cast is he who trusts in man. Where is our hope? Our hope must be in the name of the Lord. That's the only time our country will change. Fiji, I don't even remember which team it was that won. I think it might be rugby when they won. People were cheering and shouting and declaring, but they could not hear the cheers. I shared that picture last night and they just held each other.